Hello everyone, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench. Welcome back to this 12th and final part of the build of this beautiful Airfix 148 scale Gannet. So, uh, this is part of the Wendy's Memorial Group build. Wendy actually bought me this model and um, Wendy's bought me some of the bits and pieces I've been using on it as well. So it's a great, uh, it's a great way to remember her for, for me, really. Um, so... Uh, what have I done while I've gone off camera? What we did in part 11, we did all the underside, we got all the undercarriage doors fitted, we got all the Bombay filled out, Bombay doors fitted. This is all very, very flimsy. The attachment points are absolutely tiny, so we need to be really careful not to knock all that off. And as I said in part 12, uh, part 11, sorry, you need to be very careful and think about what you're going to do. For instance, if we fit this antenna here, you can see I've fit the, the antenna and the, uh, and the wire. Um, if we turn the model over now, it's going to break. So make sure we get all the un all the underside stuff done first, and then we can just move on. Uh, so as you can see there, I fitted the antenna itself. Be careful of these Bombay doors because they're flimsy. I fitted the antenna itself, and I've also fitted the the antenna wire. And um, what I've done there, I have used a material called model casting. Okay. Now you're probably thinking it's Easy Line. Easy Line here. You've got all that stretching and everything. If you are using Easy Line, be very, very careful. Um, I've fallen guilty to it myself. You attach it to the fin, you pull it, you put some super glue on, and, you, and then you leave it. And the trouble is, you've pulled it so hard that there's constant tension on this antenna, and over time, it will just snap off. Now, the model cast and stuff, its main difference is it's round in profile, whereas Easy Line is flat. If, you've, if you haven't already seen it, go back and have a look at my Wingnut Wings Wednesdays video when I finished the Fokker E4. And I rigged that with the, mod, the um, Infini stuff, but it's basically Easy Line. And I wanted to paint the line silver. And as soon as you paint them silver, you can see straight away, it becomes like, um, almost like bunting. <laughs> you know, you'll see on a builder's yard, but they have the red, white stripes warning you, you know, it's an area not to go into. And it sort of takes on this kind of you know, this ribbon-like look rather than round. Whereas this stuff, the model cast and stuff, is circular in shape. You can see it's 0.13 diameter. Um, and I've got a piece here which I'm not going to use because the one downside with it, you can see here, uh, where is it? It's got a kink in it on one end. Um, where is it? There's a kink in it. Um, maybe the kinks come out now. But basically, the way it's sort of come around and folded and you know, put over the edge, almost like a fishing line, it kind of kinks and then you've got to pull it. It does stretch, okay, I'll hold it in my fingers firmly and give it a little stretch. You can see it does stretch, but nothing like as much as the easy line. So you just need the slightest amount of tension. You can see it's, it won't snap and everything like, um, like a stretch sprue will, but you do have that round section. And as you can see on here, I've gone in with a silver Sharpie. Where's my Sharpie gone? Here it is gone in with a silver sharpie um, and basically there we go and as you can see it's round it doesn't have that horrible ribbony look to it like you'll see on my Fokker E4 um, so yeah this stuff here look around in the Japanese modeling shops uh, I'm not going to direct you to a direct link because everybody will go there and the price will go up but you can guarantee that if you're buying this on eBay in Europe or whatever you're going to be paying about four or five times the price for it so bear that in mind um, what I all do is open a shop and start stocking stuff like this. But basically, there we go. So you've got this this lovely stuff, which is absolutely amazing. Gary put me onto it. If you remember that beautiful book that I showed you on the Felix Stowe in my World We Not Wings Wednesdays, he put me onto it. I got some, and I am never ever going back to Easy Line. Uh, if, if you're not painting it, I think you get away with it. But it's not a patch on this stuff. So. Um, there we go. Have another quick look at that. You can see it's just lovely. It doesn't have that horrible ribbony look to it. I've also added these two little antennas here that I noticed on the real thing that the Airfix instructions don't call up. You can see them there. They're just made of stretch sprue um, and I've painted them black. Uh, I saw an aircraft in a walk around and they were like a silver colour. I, I thought they might stand out a bit too much, although they're probably going to be covered with the wings. I've also noticed that these little pads here Let's use this super glue applicator as a pointer. These pads here, one there, one there, they actually have little supports on them that when the wings go on, when these wings go on, they rest on there. Maybe that actually, maybe that's what these are here. 
So if that's the case, they're going to have to be painted red. But I think basically what's going to happen is they are going to rest on there. Are they or not? We shall see when we get there. But uh, that might be what they are. Uh, but they, they're they painted red on the aircraft I saw. So we'll have a look at that. If this is the case, we shall paint them because they'll stand out like a sore thumb. Then it just breaks up the, the grey, you know. Uh, so... If you notice, I've still got the cockpits covered. I've still got the wings, the, the glass and everything masked. The reason being, I may decide to give it a clear coat after it's all together. I may decide just to dust over with a flat coat. I don't know yet. We shall see. But um, we've got to make sure there's no dust and stuff on there when we do that like there is here. I've been keeping it covered up. So um, it really is a beautiful model. Don't be surprised. Moss and I were talking about this last night. And don't be surprised if you see Edward release this kit in their own box with some special decals and um, some special decals and some photo etch and resin and stuff to make it into something a little bit different. But uh, it really is a beautiful, beautiful kit. So the other thing we've done, we've got the little um, pitot tubes and antenna and stuff that go underneath the wing and the um, tail planes. We got those painted in sky. Um, I've done the, these are the supports that go up on the outside here and they support the wings when they're folded. What I've done here, I painted them silver, then cleaned them up again because silver shows up all your bits you miss, your seams and stuff. So cleaned them up again, painted them silver again, and then gave them a coat of hairspray. And then this is XF7, which with Tamiya X20A thinners. And what we're going to do there is chip that. So we're going to give them a, a proper good worn look like they've been used a few times and knocked about and everything. Um, so, yeah, all coming together really well. So this is really all about final assembly. And all we've got now is our canopies. We've obviously got our wings. Uh, we've got our supports for our wings. Got another canopy there. We've got a propeller here. We've got another canopy there. We've got another wing support. We've got some clear parts because we've got one clear part to fit under the wing. We've got our other propeller here. We have a, another wing support, another wing support, which is all painted up with chrome and everything. And then we've got here, we've got our spindle, which is going to go on the front for the propeller. We have the plate that's going to hold that in. And we have the tail hook assembly, which I've painted in sky. Um, I need to check my references. I think that I may have to have a... A sort of spirally pattern put on it so that is basically all we've got now and you can see if i remove these sprues and most of this isn't going to be used we'd have nothing left so uh there we go we can see we've got some parts in here that we're not using so you can see there's going to be some other options coming but um apparently they're not going to do the one with the big bulge in the bottom it's got different fuselage and wings and everything so we shall see about that but you can see the propellers when they go together they look absolutely stunning really beautifully engineered very nice indeed with all the decals and everything on there so uh yeah lots and lots of work has gone on um off camera lots and lots of work on camera but um as i say in this video we're going to get it finished how much i'm going to be out of film i don't know because i need to work under a magnifier and i can't film through my magnifier because of the way my camera is set up but we shall see um probably do the wing fitting and everything but i want to dry fit these wings and see if those bits sticking out there are indeed those supports and if they are then um in fact we can look at that now if they are those supports then we need to get those painted red before we do anything else so that's got to go into there we've got these two little rods that are going to go in the hole if you can see what i'm doing here trying my utmost not to drop it there we go so that's that fitted when that goes down, yes it does. So there we go. They need to be painted red. So that's something I need to do, is get those little nubbins there that are coming out of the roundel, they need to be painted red. So I'll get that done. Um, I also really should touch up that white where the decal's broken up around it. But uh, because it's like that and you're never going to see it, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to paint those little bits red. So back in a sec. Hey, okay, red bits painted, as you can see. Red bits there, so that's all good. Um, what else have I done? I've got this part off ready to paint the wings. And I've also gone on and fitted this little antenna thing here, whatever it may be. That's on the uh, tail plane. And we've also got a small clear lens in that wing. And we've got a little pitot tube in that wing. 
So when it's all um, when it's all dry and done, then I'll go over with some wash. I'm going to be having to do little touch ups anyway, I think. So uh, right, so I haven't fitted these wings yet, so I don't really know how it's all going to go. But I'm going to use Tamiya Extra Thin so we get a nice weld. Um, and I may I, no, I probably won't actually. I was going to say I'll put a drop of glue on there. No, I won't. It'll look silly. So basically, we've got those two little legs there that I'm pointing to. So we've got two little legs there, and we've got that one leg there, and we've got this bit here. So the two little legs are going to go into this slot, the one leg there is going to go into that slot, and then this here, this square hole, is where the um, the, uh, the, the the leg there is going to fit, and then this is going to go into that hole there. Okay, and that's all going to see, like, you can see this is all painted with chrome and silver and all sorts and uh, lots and lots of work so um, I'm gonna pick this up and see how we go I hope I don't drop it right so we've got to manipulate this in so that that forward peg's got to go into that slot then those two, sorry into the slot and then those two have got to go into that slot and then that piece at the back has got to go in as you can see you've got to try and get it all to go in together and then that wing is going to sit on that fuselage and rest like that. Now what I'm tempted to do is leave that and not glue anything. And then this piece, this is getting so difficult to hold. It just feels like everything's going to break. And then this is going to, I've already taken all the paint off as you can see. So that is going to drop into there. It's lifting the wing up slightly. Wow, that is lovely. Okay, so that has gone into there beautifully, like that. As I say, I'm going to come in with the extra thin. So we're going to have to do some touch-ups afterwards, I suspect, because we've got the silver paint and the extra thin won't like that. Well, the, the silver paint won't like the extra thin, should I say. Let's put a drop in there, so that's going to hold that, and I'm going to put a drop in there. It's amazing, actually, you come in with some washes, and it will hide a lot of sins. I think I might just also, if I can, just put a drop on there. The more contact points, the better. We'll see how that dries out. So as you can see, I haven't glued it at the front because we've got that lovely chrome shaft. I don't want to get glue on that. What I might do, actually, on that front shaft, I think what I might do is get some of this micro crystal clear grab a little cocktail stick there must be one here somewhere i was using one a minute ago here we go there it is your test okay we're going to get some micro crystal clear on the end of there that's too much okay and then i'm going to put some in there now the thing is this is water base so it won't affect any of this lacquer base paint Hopefully that'll capillary into that gap. I can see it going in. That's great. So that's going to go in and gel. And then I'm going to get a cotton bud, wet the end. And just mop up the excess, wipe the excess on my hand. I've just had a shower, so I'm all nice and clean. And now I'm getting muck all over my eyes again. There we go. And that'll dry. As the name implies, it'll dry crystal clear. I'm going to put some around the front as well. That's going to really hold that wing in. Nice and solid. Get it into the gap. It's thin enough that it will capillary in. If yours has gone a bit thick, then just thin it with a drop of water. Okay, so that's gone in like that. Be very careful if you thin your... Um, Crystal clear with IPA because IPA will attack these paints. I'm not sure to what extent, but um, there we go. We've got to make sure that red thing is sat on that pad. There we go. So that can dry like that. So I'm going to go off camera and do the other one and then leave it all to dry before we start messing around with the upper wings. But no, that is. Um, Get another cotton bud. I can't reach anything over my right arm because my bloody shoulder is in agony. There we go. 
let that dry. I'm going to put another drop of extra thin on this rear mount here. It's got quite a large contact area. It's almost got a great big peg gone inside the wing on that one. So that should all dry nice and solid. Oh, Wendy would have loved this, eh? We've got the folded wings coming on board now. Right, she's watching. She's up there with Jess watching down. Right, I'll, um, I'm will i going to get the other one glued on and then I'll be back. Right, they're on. They're not dry yet, but I have put a couple of drops of crystal clear. Down. I don't want to tip it back, but I, put, I have put a couple of drops of crystal clear where those little red posts sit on those two landings. If I was to build another one of these, which I probably won't, I would actually drill the end of those red things and put a piece of 0.5 wire in there and drill a 0.5 hole and that would make everything really rigid and it would be great if, you, if you're if you building a model you're going to take to shows and stuff I would thoroughly recommend that because that's going to really make it um, you know really make it strong Now these two antennae I added here I've managed to bend them when I've put the wings on so I'm going to have to play with those and get them right I imagine they get bent about anyway um, so while that's all dry I'm thinking I'm going to fit this nose now you're watching this today, which is Tuesday the 24th of September 2024. I should remember that, it's my mate's birthday. Um, so yeah, you're watching this today. Tomorrow is, uh, wing, oh, so winged up wings. Tomorrow is World War I Wednesday, and I'm working on the stop with Cam and then working on something else. And you will see me absolutely, completely cock up with something very similar to this. <laughs> So make sure you tune in for that. You'll really enjoy it and you'll be shouting at the screen. Anyway, um, so here we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the Tamiya White because it's not as thin and it won't capillary underneath that ring as much as the other stuff does. Okay, so I'm doing that and then I'm going to go to the cotton bud. I'm just going to make sure. I thought I touched that there. So I'm going to put that into there, put that into there. There we go, that can go in like that. We can push that in like that. And just leave it to dry. Now at the end of the day, if the shaft gets glued, it doesn't matter because we just won't glue the props on. But you can see now why I didn't want to glue that in at the time that Airfix were telling me to, because it was going to be quite clear that it was going to get broken. Right, now I'm just going to put a drop of extra thin into there and a drop in the bottom and then using the tweezers I can just apply some pressure. The trouble is finding somewhere you can actually push on. I've also gone round and done some little bits of chipping with a silver pencil and I've also put a drop of PVA at each end of the antenna there to represent the sort of mounting that it goes into. So we'll get those little touch up with grey paint as well. Um, so yeah, this is looking good, even if I say so myself. And there will be some photos at the end of this video, so you'll be able to see it. I don't do the photos with the lovely background and all that like Sully does. Um, it'll just be on the bench with maybe a towel or something behind, but we shall see. Right, so that's glued in there and it's free to spin. So that's pretty cool. I'm not going to put the propellers on until last. Um, I'm not going to fit these upper wings either. We do have this tail skid, to, this um, tail hook, to, arrestor hook to put in. But as you can see, I've got 290 degrees and then it's almost like a key going into a door. You've got to put it in, turn it 90 degrees. There you go. Look at that and it locks in. And that's going to be glued in. You can see that's going to stick out like that. So, uh, yeah, Mr. Flimsy, I can tell you. So, um, I wish it retracted, really, but it doesn't, apparently. So, let's look. it looks like it doesn't retract at all. Um, I'm probably going to leave it off, to be honest, because it's just going to get snapped off. I'll probably place it in a cockpit or something, and then I can put it on when I decide where I'm going to put this model because this is one model you don't really want to be picking up and moving because everywhere you look it's just you've got the antenna you've got those two antenna there you've got the propeller you've got all these gear doors you've got the bomb doors there's loads of bits these rockets they'll snap off really easily so um yeah but as you can see she's looking lovely she's looking really lovely and she's going to get finished today
Right, so uh, what's next? Uh, it's those wings, so I've got to leave it to dry. I'm going to have to go and watch telly for an hour or something. Back in a minute. So these wings are kind of dry, so I want to get this video done and out there. Um, so basically, uh, what I need to do is get this glued on. So what I'm tempted to do is put some extra thin on here. Okay, and then I'm going to put this... Slide that on there, and that is actually strong enough to hold it on its own. Okay, so we can do the same on the other side. Okay, so that's going to go on like so. There we go. So they've gone on like that. And then this one is for this side. So this is going to go into here so it's going to go into that hole in the wing right so what we're going to do here then we are going to get our micro crystal clear out again get the cocktail stick and we are going to put a drop of this that's too much on there i'm going to put some of this in that hole without getting it on the antenna because that'll be a nightmare Right, bring that out of there. That's, I'm going to put some on the other side at the same time because once we've got that one in the other side, it's going to be in the way of this one, isn't it? Oh, that was lucky. Oh, that has gone on there, Tanner. Bloody things. <laughs> I was resting my arm on. I didn't feel those bloody tweezers under me. They moved and then I jolted. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I've got some on there as well. So I'm just going to get that off of there. Ah, bloody hell. Right. I need to get another bottle of this or top it up with some or put it in a different container because it's so, it's getting so, oh, for God's sake. I'm going to do this Wow, one. that is fiddly difficult and I actually moved these little wings and broke away the little drop of crystal clear I put in there. So after it's all done, I'll put another little drop in there. Um, I don't know how much strength these uh, these arms are going to give us on the outside. So, um, right. We've got our arms here and they are actually handed. So we'll put those bits there away. And we have on here, this is going to come down. Um, this is going to come down from a hole up in there and then sit on this lug that's sitting out there on the front. So they're handed so that this little lug here that's sitting out is going to sit on that lug on the wing. Um, and it's got a like a little uh, like a little nubbin on there. So that's going to go facing forwards. Now these have been hairsprayed. So what I'm going to do with these is get some uh, get some water on a brush. Uh, find a brush. Here we go. Come here, brush. Thank you. This old humble brush will do just to get some water on there. And we'll get that wet. There you see all the bristles coming out. This is why we don't use them for painting. Some people use them for decals. I, I really would advise against it because they you get hairs under your decals and it's a nightmare, especially if you notice it as it started to cure and you've put micro set and so on it. So, right, uh, we'll grab our cocktail stick again. And I'm going to see if I can just do some chipping on here and just chip this. There we go. So you can see on here, I'm able to just touch the paint with a cocktail stick to get it a bit wetter. And what the water will do is soak through the paint and it will it will revitalise the... Um, the... Um, the hairspray was the word I was looking at. Oh, bloody tweezers. They're the bane of my life today. Go away. It's not even sat on my chair properly, so I'm probably off screen. So we'll scratch up that area around there because that's where that bracket is. And you can see I can come along here with my cocktail stick and just tap it and scratch it. And... See that? Just put random 
chips and scratches on it like it's been used and then when it's got a black wash on it or a, a dark grey wash as it were it'll look great because these are obviously taken off and they probably get put on the ground you know it's all okay thinking they've got all these procedures they have to go by but in a in a wartime situation I would imagine there we go. So you can see that one there, that is chipped up. You give it a dry brush as well if you want to. We have a, a brush here with some aluminium paint on it, which is for dry brushing. We can just do that and that'll pick up those little nubbins and that. And on this end, there's like a little cable sort of thing. And just give them a, you can see it just looks so much better than just having it painted red. You can see it kind of looks used. So we'll do this one as well. Sometimes you can put too much water on and it becomes very easy to remove the paint. But that's, that's not such a bad thing sometimes. Get some more water on there. It's just random scratches and chips. It's, there's no particular pattern. Okay, as I say, it looks a bit garish at the moment, but once we get a... Um, some more water on there. Once we get a wash on there it'll uh, really tone it down. Get some fine little scratches there that okay so there you go and then we can give it a dry brush and that will bring everything together. So there you can see it's sort of chipped and worn out and stuff. Right, so we've got to get those glued on. Now I'm not quite sure how they're going to fit. I need my tweezers. That's the one for this side. So how the hell am I going to pick this thing up? God, it's getting really heavy. It's got so much weight in it. So there's the hole at the front of the way. I know you can't see it, but I can. Come on, go in the hole. Right, and then that is going to go... Oh, Jesus. I'm going to have to do this off camera, guys, because I can't possibly do it for you to see. I'm sorry, but I can't... Yeah. I can't put it on its side. It's just going to break the wings off. So um, I'll come back when I've done it, and I'll tell you how I did Here it. Here we go. Um, just one note, if I was building one of these again, I'd do the antenna last. I thought, I'd, I thought it might go between the wings, but it doesn't. It's above them. So there we go. Uh, we've got those on. I basically ended up gluing them on with um, Tamiya Extra Thin and then gave a tiny little touch of super glue in there just to add a bit of rigidity. But uh, they do add a bit of rigidity to the whole assembly. And um, keep an eye on top, make sure everything's nice and even. And there we go. So those are on there. They're nice and strong. I wouldn't like to turn the model over and put it on its wings, but they are pretty, pretty strong. Um, but this is definitely a model for putting somewhere safe. In a cabinet or something, I'm going to put this in a glass cabinet, I think. One of the models is in there now, is going to have to come out. Because um, this, you touch it, it's just going to fall apart, I think. Uh, there's so many fragile bits on it, but that's the, that's the beauty of it. Um, it sounds like I'm complaining. I'm not. Fragile parts means it's all to scale. It's the same as like mini art kits, you know, with all their millions of bits and that. But they do make a beautiful scale model at the end of the day. So... Um, so look at this propeller. So that one's going to go on like that. And then that one's going to go on like that. And I'm assuming it's designed so you leave, you glue the front one on to the spindle and leave the back one unglued. I'm guessing let's have a look in the instructions, see what they say in here. Where are we fitting the props? They're already there. Um, so yeah, do not glue the rear one and apply only apply glue to the highlighted area shown here. So you're only going to apply glue to the front end. So... If anybody in the comments can tell me, please, I'd like to know when a fairy gannet stops, do the, do the propellers just stop at random or are they always? Actually, that's a stupid question. I was going to ask if they always stopped in the same position. Of course they don't because they're contra-rotating, so they could stop at any position. They could be like that, they could be like that, like that, like that, like that, like that, any, any position. So um, even if they are geared together. So it's telling us to only apply cement to the end of that shaft. 
So here we go, we'll put some cement on the end of there. It's a bit wobbly, isn't it? But you know, if we're not going to be playing with it, it doesn't matter. And then we can carefully put the propeller over that, push it back. There we go. So we've got a propeller at the back turning separately from the propeller at the front. There we are. So that's our props on. We are basically good, uh, guys done. Um, now I'm going to have to consider, am I going to give this a little flat coat? I think probably not because the pictures I'm looking at, they do tend to have a sheen. But what I do want to do is go around with some oils and just tar up all these little wing fold areas and everything and perhaps put some staining in there or whatever just do something just to make it all look a bit more um a bit more into you know because this is all like nice and spotlessly clean whereas this is all grubby so um i think that's what we'll do but yeah we can see here if i pick the model up <laughs> oh god the propellers is even worse now um there we go you can see it's uh it's looking good it is looking good. So um, it's quite a project and for a £50 model it's only 50 quid. And also bear in mind I put an extra 10 grams in the nose of this and it's you know it's still teetering slightly so you might want to not you know go with the extra few grams rather than just um, spare parts in there. So we've still got the arrestor hook to go on but I'm not going to that's just going to get snapped off as soon as we look at it and then the canopies will go on and we've got to get the masking off and then it will be final reveal so I'm gonna go around some oils get that done and let it all dry first go around some oils so this video may not go out today today is Tuesday the 24th of September 2024 as I said but um, this may not go out today now I'm not sure how much I'm gonna get done but, uh, it may go out on Wednesday morning instead or very late on Tuesday but, uh, so yeah I said earlier about when you see my video tomorrow you may have already seen it <laughs> so we shall see Right, okay, so see. later on now, and the oils have gone on. I um, just found a good way of picking it up. There we go. So um, probably not good to hold the rudder, but there we go. The oils are on, so you can see now they've got the, the sort of grimy look in there. In fact, that's a little bit too grimy, so I'm going to grab a cotton bud and just get in there and remove that. I can do that off camera, can't I? Uh, so now, the moment of truth, I've decided not to give it a flat coat, so we can get this foam out which has been in here forever. We'll carefully pull that out without damaging anything, hopefully. Flimsy bits and pieces in the cockpits. There we go. And finally this, this rear one, there we are. You can see that beautiful Quinter Studios cockpit in there. So I'm going to grab a cocktail stick, get that underneath there and then I should be able to get in there with the tweezers and pull that out so you can see we've done a great job protecting all that edge around there this one's going to be a little more awkward because the wings want to break off just imagine carrying this downstairs to put in the cabinet and dropping it oh dear 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 hours and hours and hours of work this is So uh, yeah, if you want to, if if you want a quick build, maybe look elsewhere other than the Gannet. Maybe look at the Anson or the Walrus or something. But um, yeah, the uh, this is not a quick build. I reckon it would actually be a lot quicker. Bombay shut, wings extended. Okay, um, I think that would make it a much simpler build so if you are newer to the hobby it's definitely not a beginner's kit but if you are quite new to the hobby then um yeah wings extended bombay shut then you won't have to build all the weapons you've got a one-piece bombay just glue over the hole that's it job done you don't have to paint and weather the bombay you have all those decals to put in there and everything um and obviously with the wing folds, it involves a lot of filling, clean up, all the aluminium paint, and I've drilled loads of holes in, got all the little brackets going on, and doing all this fiddling around at the end like you've just seen me do. You know, so, um, yeah. But we can see now, in that cockpit, in those cockpits, that lovely Quinter Studios 
stuff it's really sort of come to life now it's all blended into one so now we've got to get these uh, lovely ASK masks off so I'm going to start with a cocktail stick in the corner oops maybe that's I'm just I'm going to break this I know I am I just know it so what I'm going to do is come with a knife there we go and just lift the corner of these two Really careful not to scratch the um, if I'd known I wasn't going to flat coat it, I would have done this before. And I'm going to grab my beautiful Anise tweezers, which I seem to have nothing. I thought I'd lost them. These are wonderful, these things are from a company called Anise AN059. They're absolutely brilliant. Got a very sharp point on them, they've got a really good grip. and they don't flick small parts across the floor so there we go so that's that one remember we mask this up on the inside as well we use the um where is it the ask double-sided masking set for this one 4210 absolutely brilliant i love ask masks they're awesome so there we go so that's that one off get this one off and then I'll go off camera get the rest off and then I think we can do a final reveal unfortunately less the arrestor hook because that is just gonna get snapped off every possible I wonder if it does retract maybe it does go right up in the fuselage we shall see and we've got our um, windscreen to do here, so I'm going to just carefully come in with the knife. There we go. Lovely. We've got some dust in there, look, that's okay. Um, we've got this little tiny piece in the corner. Is that glue on the surface or is that dust inside? No, that's inside. So we'll get in there with the airbrush and blow it out in a second. There we go, that came out easy enough. So you can see just how good those masks are. They give you a separate mask to go around the windscreen wiper. You can see there how good it is. How good the ASK masks are just awesome. I love them. Um, and then we've got this corner here is going to come up. There we go. And then we've got that one there. That's going to come down. I'm not sure if this is on the surface or if it's inside. We've got some dust in there as well. Looks like static. Get under the corner, lift it up. Get it gripped. There we go. We only seem to have dust in the forward cockpit, not in the others. So I'm not sure if that is glue residue. Because they have been on there quite a while. It feels like it's on the inside. I can't feel anything. Maybe if I just go inside there, gently... Yeah, it's on the inside. Okay, so should be able to get the airbrush charged up. Press them off. Make sure you blow it into a tissue first. You don't want to go spraying thinners into your cockpit. You might be able to get in there with the airbrush and clear that out. No, we can't. So what we'll do, this is a good little education for the newer modelers out there, even though you probably won't be building one of these. Um, We'll get a nice soft brush. Uh, -dum 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 -dum. What have we got here? Sorry about this, guys. There's a nice soft brush. So we should be able to get that up in there. Oh no, that area there is sealed. Oh dear. And what I'm going to do there then? Well, can I get to it from that cockpit? I think I'm going to have to do this off camera. Let's try and get this front one here, get a brush in there and just, there we go. 
as you can see, just get a brush in there and lightly slide it about. And that'll get in and uh, remove that dust. We've got nothing on this side, it's only on that side. I've got a feeling maybe I can get in through the cockpit there. Yes, I can. This would have been a lot easier if we'd gone for the wings out. Did we get it? No, we didn't. Can we get into there? It's sort of trying to go in. Maybe a smaller brush. A smaller brush with longer bristles. Oh, this could do it. Here's one here. This is a lining brush, isn't it? Great, great big long bristles. <laughs> it's got in there, but it's not enough to remove the, the dust. I'll do this off camera, Karen, but that's what I'm going to do. Just with a brush like this, I'm going to get in there and uh, just keep going until I've got rid of all of it. Right, back in a sec. And there we are, guys. She's done. 24th of September, 2024. She's finished. There she is. The canopies are quite awkward to get on, especially this one. If you've got the wings folded, it will go in. You kind of roll it over and then push it back. It does go in, believe me. Um, but it's really, really difficult, <laughs> but it does go in. Um, if it wasn't a clear part, it wouldn't be so bad because you could just clip it around, but you're worried about scratching it, shattering it and all that. Uh, so there we go. She's done. All done. Cop, it's all nice. Um, and there we are. So I'm going to do some photos and I'll stick them on the end of this video, just a couple. And then I'll go from there and I'll put it, I'll put the finished build over on, um, on Wendy, Wendy's memorial page over on Facebook. I'll probably do that tomorrow now. But there we are. Um, so there we are, guys. She's a beauty. Um, built in memory of Wendy. Uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, she bought me this kit and she also bought me some of the bits and pieces I've used to build it, amongst other kits as well. She was a very, very generous person. She bought lots of people little presents and she sent them to them. And uh, she was some. Um, yeah, she was lovely all round, really. Uh, everybody in the community loved her to bits. So, there we go. Um, I'm happy with how it's come out. Uh, don't forget to go and look at Sully's build. Sully's build is in the description below the video. Um, his build is absolutely stunning. I know I haven't done. I haven't taken the masking off the wing lights. I always forget that when I finish a kit. <laughs> so there we are. There's our masking off the wing lights. The landing lights, should I say. And these are again, these are in the ASK set, I think. I think I remember rightly they were in there. Were they? I'm sure they were. Or maybe they weren't. No, they're not. I had to make them myself. So there you go. Right. There we are, that's them off. Those in these tweezers are just awesome. Brilliant things there. I've, 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 lots of people who follow me have bought them and they're like the best tweezers they've ever had. Everybody says the same. They really are good. So there she is in all her glory with her landing lights displayed as well now. So um, very, very happy with how it's come out. It's a beautiful kit from Airfix. They've done a fantastic job. Pranjit uh, engineered this. He's done an amazing job. I just wish there'd been a bit more positive location for the doors and stuff. But then if it had great big plastic lumps in there holding the doors in, I'd say it's a shame they put these great big plastic lumps on there. So you can't win, can you? Um, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful model. The only thing I've added is the uh, the cockpit set, as you can see, from uh, Quinter Studios. That was, um, I've got it here. That was, uh, there we go. That was QD48444. That's the large set, so that's with the seat belts as well. You can get just the cockpit set. I'm not sure if you can get just the seat belts, but it's available from Hannant's. And then I added the um, the res kit resin wheels, which are obviously designed for a different kit. I just had to draw them out a bit to fit. But um, I don't know why. I just I just wasn't keen on the kit wheels. I don't remember exactly why I bought them now, but uh, anyway, I did, and they're on there. 
So there we are, there she is, all in all her glory. So um, I did see one of these built at the Gloucester show and there was antenna leads coming down from here, down into here. Uh, but I can't find any reference pictures of that. So um, I'm not sure that this particular version had it. Maybe they don't model a different version. But anyway, um, if I've got them missing, then I've got them missing. I'm not going to put them in now because they probably go underneath the wings. But uh, anyway, I will see you all soon. Thank you for watching. I'll put a little bit of music up now and um, some video, some photographs. Enjoy and thank you for staying with me through this one. Um, I don't know what we're going to pick up next, but uh, there will be another project starting. And Stuka Sundays will be coming online very soon. And we will also be very shortly starting on the Pocker Porsche 917. I've been given the go ahead and told a date that I can start producing videos. And it's, uh, it's in the very near future, guys. All right. So thank you for watching. I will see you all soon. And uh, stay safe. Keep modelling. And um, any comments or questions, stick them on down below. Bye for now.